Negotiations, uh, stage of the interview process. A, we're always negotiating, right? Um, think about it from a recruiter's perspective. Recruiter's famous line is, we always say ABC will always be closing, right? We always want to close. Well, you should always be negotiating on your edge, of your state throughout the stages of the entire interview process, right? This means pre-negotiation, um, starting with the RPS. RPS is recruiter phone screen, right? This is the initial conversation that any one of you and myself may have here together, right? Here we go back. We want to know our own market value, aka anchoring, right? What else typically comes out of this call? We all know, right? We have a base salary, which is cash, right? We have a targeted percentage bonus. We have an equity package, and there are performance multipliers on my, my bonus and my equity package, depending on how you perform, right? Simple. Great. Okay, now I know what this looks like. Now I can go do some of my research and I can get a little more prepared for after that initial conversation with either a technical phone screen or hiring manager screen, which is actually kind of the next steps, right? TPS or HMS before on-sites. Then we can kind of go into that feeling confident and comfortable because the reality is, is we don't want to go through an entire process, do all the prep work, and then get to the end and be like, I want a million dollars. And I'm like, great, 350 is your offer, right? Nobody wants that. So you can ask about philosophies. You can also say, you know what? I'm not, having, I'm not really active in the market. I'm just, you know, this is an opportunity that kind of excited me. So therefore, you know, I would kind of like to see what happens. So can I have that secondary conversation? If that conversation goes well and we think it's worth kind of taking this thing to a more formal process, then you know what? We can start talking about some of the comp my compensation expectations, right? That's 30 minutes of a recruiter, typically maybe 30 minutes to an hour of a hiring manager or a technical phone interview of time. That's not a lot of time. And then have that more conversation, you know, if, if necessary, if it's absolutely necessary. Maintain open timelines. I told you you're going to hear that a lot. Even in the RPS, when are you looking to make a change? How soon? So forth like that. That's exactly one of these things. Again, you know what? I'm just in initial stages. I'm not really sure. You know, if I, it's the right opportunity for me, I'll consider making a change at that time. We're not giving any timelines. Like, right? We're not saying I need to make a decision in two weeks. I need to make a decision by the end of the month. Just don't do that. Please leave things open. That allows us to kind of extend potential offers, have follow-up conversations that are necessary, and go from there. Um, again, see what I tell you. Maintain those open timelines, even with the TPS and the on-sites. Maintain ambiguity. We're not really giving a ton of information. You know, we definitely want to have multiple, you know, points of contact with the recruiter to get interview prep and so forth. But, you know, we don't want to really want to know, give them too much information. We want to show a little bit of data pieces, maybe let them know we're interviewing with a couple other organizations, you know, just to kind of maybe speed things up, maybe kind of slow things down, whatever the case is. But for the most part, it's keeping things kind of open. Creating leverage will come from multiple on-sites, multiple offers, right? We'll talk about leverage. That's kind of the last piece we'll talk about tonight before we go into the script. And I think with that, when you have the ability to create leverage, it allows you to build a case for why you want to get the offer or potential offer from the organization you have targeted. And therefore, once we create leverage, we can kind of say, hey, this is how I'm going to get here. This is how I'm going to get the offer I'm looking for. And then we'll go from there. Oh, wrong, wrong one. Um, hiring committee team matching. If it's a Meta, a Google, you know, like I said, Amazon's doing a little bit of this more and more now. But one of the things I can tell you is this is something else to help buy time, right? Especially say you finished the Meta interviews and you haven't finished yet maybe your Google on-site. So they, you go to hiring committee, the team says at Meta, yes, they want to hire you. Then they match you to a couple of teams. Then you're supposed to have these conversations with these hiring managers, right? To understand the team. You know, you get to meet the manager, understand the team, understand some of the projects, role, scope, responsibilities, et cetera. Um, you can push those out, right? While you finish your, your, other, your other pieces and your other interviews. So collectively, you have some time. You're buying yourself some time here. Um, not all companies are that way. But again, keep in mind, typically these bigger, really meta, really Google, Amazon a little bit, Microsoft a little bit more so recently have kind of come to this a little bit. Let's interview you, put you through a process, and then we'll do the team matching after. So this is one of these pieces that, you know, we know is going to take longer. So we need to be prepared and kind of plan out how we're going to do all of our interviews so we can ideally get to the end in the solution of multiple offers within a, you know, like I said, a five to 10 day time frame is ideal, right? I know it's tough. It takes a lot of work, but it can be done. Um, 
One of the other things with this though, you get to assess your priorities, right? You get to assess what's important to you. Like if you talk to two or three different hiring managers and you're like, I don't like that one, well then good. You don't have to work with that one. If you really like the other two, maybe it's an additional conversation with both of them. Maybe it's not a role or a scope. Maybe it's maintaining legacy stuff versus working on something cutting edge. There's all sorts of pieces that can happen here, but it helps kind of prioritize some of the, the intangibles that are important to you outside of just the compensation piece. Okay. Um, there you go. Hey, look, told you, I see it a lot. Maintain open timelines. Get to a point of competing offers at this stage is what ultimately what we want to do. That's why I just mentioned that. We want to get to competing offers. Um, and then the negotiation, right? This is the end result. This is where we're down to our top two, three, four companies. This is when we can start sharing pieces. This is when we can start talking through the data pieces to get to kind of this yes solution that's going to make us excited and feel good about our choice. And at that point, we'll talk through what the skilled dialogue looks like. This is the biggest piece, right? Failing to anchor, not knowing our market value. So we want to know our market value. How do we do this? Hey, step one, do your research. Step two, or 1A, use things like levels.fyi. LinkedIn salaries, kind of dated. I wouldn't necessarily say it's, it's kind of my top choice. Um, there is also Glassdoor, which I don't, recommend. I think it's a little dated as well. Um, if you want to take the opportunity to go into the world of blind.com, there is a lot of information on blind, a lot of negative information. So I will preface that, that if you go in there, be prepared to read things that are going to make you say, why would I ever want to go to this company? Versus there are people that post very specific questions about, hey, I got an offer from XYZ company at this level. This is the breakdown. Is this a good offer? Then you get people chiming in, well, no, I know somebody that works there and their offer was X. So there is some pieces in there, but the reality is these days, people go to Levels. Why? Because Levels uses the most up-to-date information it has based on the fact that the information they are collecting is actual, factual offer letters. It's not something where I can go in there and say, hey, I'm Recruiter Randy. I just got this awesome offer from this company. And my base is $499,000, right? My bonus is 40% target and I'm getting $100,000 a year in liquid equity, right? They don't do that. You have to formally send in your offer letter to levels for them to collect the data pieces. That's why the FANG companies, the MANG companies, some of the tier twos, tier threes, there's a lot of information. Some of the smaller companies, startups, especially, there's not a lot of information out there. But with startups... There's other things you need to be able to assess there. So, you know, and that's risk tolerance and, you know, runway, what series of funding do they have, you know, and so forth, right? There's a lot of other pieces that come into play there. But if we're talking specifically like tier one, tier two companies, there's a lot of pieces here. So what do we do in this situation, right? We're going to go through it. We're going to identify what the total range is. If there's not 30 data points, right? That's a number that's been used for a couple of years now. I would say, you know what? I don't typically target 30 data points when I'm looking at something. I typically look at more so the last six months, right? What do the last six months of offers look like? And that's kind of what I use as my points. And then obviously you're going to have things in the bottom 25th percentile. You're going to have things that are so far to the right that, you know, they're just outlandish. They beat other offers by 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, hundred thousand dollars. We don't want to include that in our numbers, right? But we want to include typically that, 70, 50 to 75th percentile. Typically, we really want to look 75th percentile to probably about 95th percentile because that's where we know some of the ranges stand. And those are things that we want to look at. And we're going to go through all of this. Um, and then we build a range. We look at that 70, 100%. I don't necessarily think that 70, 100%. I think 70 to 100%, but 70, 95th, and we kind of take an average of that is a pretty good number to go with. 